Well, recently we filed a lawsuit against the entire state of Florida, and I do mean the entire state, uh, from the governor to the secretary of state, the secretary of corrections, every clerk of court, and every supervisor of elections in the state of Florida. And we're asking the court to do something just real basic. Make the state do its job. And what's that? Well, its job that we're asking the state to do is to take ownership over verifying, you know, whether or not a person is eligible to vote. You know, there's a lot of talk uh, over the years about election integrity, and we believe that election integrity starts and stops with the state or with the local government. And it's their responsibility to make a determination as to who is eligible to vote and who is not eligible to vote. And when it, once that determination is made, then they should uh, be able to issue uh, voter identification cards or properly notify an individual if they're eligible to vote. But you know, uh, lawsuits t take a while. You know, that can, you know, it's the ebb and flow there. But you know, we, let me tell you why we filed it, right? Because matter of fact, two of the people who were uh, charged and uh, in, in, in some cases actually found guilty uh, of, of registering or voting illegally were registered Republicans who voted for Donald Trump, right? And so what we've seen was that this issue was not just impacting, say, Democrats, or wasn't just impacting African Americans. It was impacting everyone. And it was, for us, it was, it was an embarrassment, you know, that the state of Florida would resort to arresting people and charging people for something that they made the mistake on, right? And so we wanted the state to own up to its responsibility. You know, some folks might say, well, how, how can the state effectively do this? Well, I say that they have demonstrated that they have the capacity to do it because guess what? They issue driver's license, right? And you don't see people getting arrested for having a driver's license when they shouldn't have it that was issued by the state. You know, even to go a step further, when we talk about returning citizens that may still owe outstanding legal financial obligations, if your driver's license gets suspended for non-payment of any fines or fees, right, before you can get your driver's license reinstated, the state will let you know exactly how much you have to pay. And the minute you pay it, your driver's license is reinstated. Here's the thing. A person can go anywhere in the state to apply for a reinstatement of their driver's license. No matter where they go, someone could put their name and their maybe Social Security and date of birth in some type of computer system, and they will immediately know how much someone owes, whether even if it's in multiple counties. And so there is a system in place, just think about it. But yet, when it comes to voting, which is way more important and way more valuable than being able to drive, the state can't even effectively and efficiently tell a person how much they owe so they'll be able to satisfy whatever debt they have and be able to vote. Well, you know, when these arrests started happening, I mean, the first question that, that popped out of everybody's mouth was, well, if the state can't verify or if we can't rely on the state to determine who's eligible to vote or who's not eligible to vote, then who can we rely on, right? And so these arrests created a lot of uncertainty about, you know, the validity of a person's Photo identification cards. Could you imagine? I mean, just think about it. If people were getting arrested for having driver's license, every driver in the state of Florida would be concerned about whether or not today is their day to get arrested uh, because the state made a mistake and it erroneously issued them a driver's license. And so these arrests definitely had a, a chilling impact on, on people's desire to participate in democracy. You know, I, I really believe that a state should be tr doing everything to encourage its citizens to participate in democracy, not doing things to discourage them. Well, the, you know, the governor um, apparently created the election integrity uh, unit or the, or the election police uh, as a response to, uh, a pr I would say, pressure uh, with people wanting to make sure that there was election integrity. Uh, but we've always said that, listen, election integrity it has to start with the state itself. You cannot go around arresting people for failures of the state. You know, the state needs to take care of its side of the street first, then hold other people responsible. But, you know, in this particular case, what you've seen was that prior to the state even owning up to its uh, failures, 
uh, they immediately went out and started taking the liberties of, of, of everyday American citizens. Could the amount of vote, felon voters change the outcome of an election? I think the amount of, of returning citizens that have gained their rights through the passage of Amendment 4 have the opportunity to change the outcome of elections uh, statewide, nationally, uh, even local uh, municipal elections as well. You know, especially uh, when you look at just the amount of people, uh, Americans, uh, that have been convicted of felony offenses or been uh, incarcerated, you know, over the years uh, due to the war on drugs, you know, and, and, and United States infatuation with over-criminalizing uh, its own citizens.